Hey y'all, welcome back to Ramblin' Mama. I'm Lisa. If you're new here and you're into deep dives on true crime, please consider giving me a subscribe. I think you'll like what you see. Thank you for your patience in me getting this video out. I was sick last week, so everything got pushed back. And I've been looking forward to doing this video for a really long time. I would love to have two series, one of them a book series, reading true crime books and you know, giving reactions to them. And the other one was giving reactions to true crime documentaries and scripted series, particularly The Staircase Killer and Gypsy Rose Blanchard. But today's episode is on casting Jean Benet. I put off watching this forever, I think because I was so confused by what it even was. I thought, is this a documentary? Is this a scripted series? Is this a scripted series trying to look like a documentary? So if you're as confused as I was about this, I'll clear it up for you. This is gonna be the format of this video. First, I'm gonna give you a broad overview of it and talk about the director and the making of it and how it was received critically. And in the second half of the video, I'm gonna give a more detailed breakdown of the most interesting moments that I found. For all of my listeners out there that are not watching, I wanna give you a heads up about the second half. It might be a little annoying to you because I'm going to show images and say this guy said that this woman said you know just a heads up but maybe it'll still be interesting to listen to first I want to ask have you seen this documentary if so what did you think about it I know it's from 2017 so it's certainly not new I forgot to ask if y'all have any recommendations for a book for me to read or something to watch pertaining to true crime if so please put it in the comments below this is the one that I'm reading now. Don't worry, I got it secondhand. It was less than $5. For those of you just listening, it, I'm reading The Death of Innocence book by John and Patsy. This really is a beautiful picture of her on the back. What this documentary kind of reminded me of, I took part in a drama therapy group many, many years ago, and it was so cool. We basically, brought to this drama therapist events in our lives that were particularly difficult or traumatic and we would cast the roles and most often people wouldn't choose to play themselves they would choose to cast someone that they trusted or liked to play themselves and it kind of felt like that person was almost like an advocate for you and you would sit back and you would watch and there's something so therapeutic, cathartic, healing, about being able to observe from that distance these very tricky moments in your life. And then based off of that, we assembled a piece and presented it to the public. And the therapist was also a very talented director who was able to pull out storylines from it and create this beautiful arc. Yeah, it was very interesting to work on that project. So I was reminded of that again because there's something interesting that happens when you're going through the physical actions of a character. And like in the drama therapy, it was a real life story, like in this documentary, to see the actors navigating that on their own or with each other and the emotions and associations that that brings up was super interesting to me and appealed to the psychology slash actor geek in me. One last thing I'll say is I'm not going to be including any video, just stills. I've had so many issues recently with getting copyright claims and the last Menendez brother video I put out was actually taken down three separate times from three separate copyright claims. I felt like the stills were the safest route to go. Without any further ado, let's get into it. If you're not familiar with casting Jean Benet, the film takes a super unique approach to exploring the infamous murder of the six-year-old beauty queen. Instead of the usual true crime documentary format, it's actually a meta-narrative that focuses on the audition process for a film about the Ramsey case. Now, I was hoping that there would actually be 
maybe even a separate film that they were actually shooting while making this documentary. But it appears that the only footage that was really made was all used for the sake of the documentary. The actors are locals to Boulder, Colorado, and they're all auditioning for various roles, such as Jean Benet, Burke, Patsy, John, the police chief. And these actors give interviews as well as short performances that are included in the film. And their interviews are really interesting because I would say the age of the adult roles tends to be probably around 50, I would say, might be an average age. So that means that a lot of these people were really in a position to be paying attention to this case as it was unraveling in 1996. And not only that, but they were possibly even living in Colorado at the time. The film was directed by Australian filmmaker Kitty Green, who had previously directed several acclaimed documentaries such as Ukraine is Not a Brothel and The Face of Ukraine. Green became interested in the Jean Benet Ramsey case after watching various true crime documentaries about it. However, she was struck by how these documentaries often presented a single definitive narrative of what happened, despite the many uncertainties and unanswered questions surrounding the case. So I will say at this point, if you are looking for something that's very pointed and examines one of these theories, for instance, the CBS documentary that was famously done looking at Burke. I think it might be a very frustrating experience for you to watch this. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more zoomed out and reflective in a social commentary type of way, then you would probably be interested in this. In an interview with IndieWire, Green explained her motivation for making casting Jean Benet. Quote, I became interested in the way that we tell stories and the way that we're obsessed with trying to get to the truth. I was interested in the power dynamics between the storytellers and the audience and how those dynamics play out in the context of a true crime story. To create the film, Green traveled to Boulder, Colorado, where the murder took place, and held open casting calls for a film about the Ramsey case. The actors who auditioned were asked to share their own thoughts and theories about the case, as well as to perform scenes from the script. The result is a film that blurs the lines between fact and fiction and raises some thought-provoking questions about the nature of true crime storytelling and our obsession with unsolved mysteries. Hi, guilty. <laughs> I think one of the most interesting things about the film is the way that it uses the audition process to explore the psychology of the people involved in the case. As the actors discuss their theories about what happened, we see how their own experiences, biases, and perspectives shape their interpretations of the evidence. At the same time, the film also highlights the way that true crime storytelling can exploit and commodify real-life tragedies. By casting actors to play real people, the film draws attention to the way that our fascination with true crime often reduces complex human stories to simplistic and sensationalized narratives. Through the audition process, we see how the actors' own experiences, biases, and perspectives shape their interpretations of the evidence. For example, some actors may seem parents as the innocent victims, while others may see them guilty of the crime. But what's fascinating is that these interpretations are not presented as definitive answers to the case. Instead, the film allows us to see the case from multiple perspectives and encourages us to consider the complexities and uncertainties involved in trying to solve a crime like this. Another theme that Casting Jean Benet explores is the way that true crime storytelling can exploit and commodify real-life tragedies. By casting actors to play real people, the film draws attention to the way that our fascination with true crime 
often reduces complex human stories to simplistic and sensationalized narratives. At the same time, the film also invites us to reflect on our own role as consumers of these narratives. Are we participating in the commodification of tragedy by watching true crime documentaries and reading true crime books? And what responsibilities do we have as viewers to respect the dignity of the people involved in these cases? Okay, so how was the film received critically? The film received positive reviews from critics who praised its innovative approach to the true crime genre and its thought-provoking exploration of the cultural and ethical implications of true crime storytelling. The film currently holds a 94% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with an average rating of 7.9 out of 10 based on 91 reviews. Critics lauded the film's unique approach of using actors to play real people involved in the Jean Benet Ramsey case, and appreciated how the film explored the ways in which our own experiences and biases shape our interpretations of the case. Some critics even described the film as a meta commentary on the true crime genre itself. In her review for the New York Times, Manola Dargis wrote, that casting Jean Benet was a fascinating and formerly ambitious work that uses the Ramsey case as a jumping off point for a wide ranging meditation on families, loss, celebrity, crime, and the ways in which we process reality through the prism of entertainment. She also praised the film for its collage like style and intelligent curiosity. Variety's Peter de Bruges called the film a singular, unconventional documentary and applauded Green's decision to let the actor's interpretation of the case take center stage, stating that it forces us to confront the ways in which we bring our own prejudices and preconceptions to every new true crime story. Overall, casting Jean Benet was widely praised for its originality, thoughtfulness, and willingness to take risks with the true crime genre. Its critical success helped to solidify Kitty Green's reputation as an innovative and daring documentary filmmaker. Overall, I found that casting Jean Benet was a pretty fascinating and thought provoking film. It really challenged my assumptions about true crime storytelling, and it invites us to reflect on our own roles as consumers of these narratives. If you're a fan of true crime documentaries or just interesting, interested in exploring new and innovative forms of storytelling, I would highly recommend that you check out Casting Jean Benet. But as I mentioned, if you're looking for something that's more going to lay out the evidence and give you a theory about who possibly did it, then this film might actually be very frustrating for you to watch. So either way, please just be forewarned about that. In this next section, I'm going to go over some interesting moments that I found in the film. I don't know if you can issue spoiler alerts for documentaries, but if you're one of those types of people who would rather be surprised entirely and not know anything specific about the film that you watch before you watch it, go ahead and click off now. So the film opens with this adorable girl who I think has a stunning likeness to Jean Benet sitting on the stool with her clapper and saying that she's auditioning for the role. And then after a beat, she innocently asks whoever's behind the camera, do you know who killed Jean Benet? And this is such a stunning moment to me because this girl is so sweet and innocent and young and for that innocence to be entangled with something as dark and awful as this crime, it just really brings it home, both the reality of the tragedy that is Jean Benet and the aftermath of all the people affected by it. And 
I hate to say this, but it really was the death of innocence for a lot of people. I really liked this woman. She was the only one of all the women auditioning for Patsy who wore something different. She said that it was a specific choice because she had been researching Patsy and noticed that she always wore the pearls and she also wore some similar earrings. And she said that it was based on Patsy's appearance on Larry King and how she usually would present herself. Okay, so I mentioned earlier how these people are from Colorado and a lot of them from the Boulder, Colorado area. This woman, actually, her parents knew John and Patsy. Her brother, unfortunately, was murdered. And based on that, her parents had some kind of a relationship with the Ramses. So because of this, it seems that everything she mentions is giving the Ramses the benefit of the doubt. This woman was really funny, and she had a really interesting anecdote that she shared regarding handwriting analysis. She was pretty certain that Patsy did it based on the note, right? Not a very groundbreaking theory. I think a lot of my subscribers would agree with this. But the interesting thing that she shared, her ex-boyfriend had a sample of her handwriting that he had analyzed. And based on that, the analyst was able to pinpoint something as random as her having an injury to her right ankle, which happened to be true. So this woman in particular puts a lot of weight in the handwriting analysis that was done. This was such a fascinating moment. We see a few actresses with the script going through the phone call. And I know a lot of my subscribers would agree that the phone call is very, very odd. So to see an actor acting that phone call, well, if you see it or you've seen it, I just want you to let me know what you thought about that. Okay, so this guy actually, I think, is one degree removed from John. He was dating a woman who was supposed to be next in line to be John's successor at his company at the time. And she even was taken in to give a statement, and she had to provide some samples for the investigation. So this guy was fairly close to the investigation, which is really fascinating. This was one of those gut-wrenching moments and something that I was alluding to earlier about the drama therapy. So the physical action that these actors have is to walk in the room and they're playing John, right? So they walk in the room and they're discovering Jean Benet's body, which to symbolize that is just her blanket. And... It was very uncomfortable watching them do that. And just that physical action brought up so much in the actors kneeling beside the blanket or sitting in a chair next to it, discovering it. And again, it was that uncomfortable feeling of what I felt anyway was the feeling of should we be doing this? Should we be recreating this? Should we be watching it? All kinds of ethical questions around that. So this guy was really interesting. He works in law enforcement, I believe. And by night, he says he's a sex educator. And when he brought his floggers out, I was like, is this a joke? Is this guy pranking? And I wondered what that had to do with anything. And then later on in the film, he talks about the ligature marks on Jean Benet and the knots and knowing what he knows with his background in BDSM, he says that whoever did this, it was 
quite intentional because the ligature marks were deep and the knots were made by someone who had to have some knowledge about what they were doing. This guy was funny. He said that he was actually working with the police department in Chicago during the time of the Jean Benet murder. And he said his department used the Boulder police as an example for what not to do, which I'm sure plenty of us could agree with that. And this other guy, like me and many of you, said he could not get over the ransom note. And he can't believe, with a sample that large, how in the world that person was never found after all these years, which you could argue that that person was found based on certain experts. And this next guy knew so much about the note just off the top of his head and it made me realize how many of us have these factoids about the case and the evidence memorized and it's so interesting right that this is part of what occupies our long-term memory is pieces of evidence from the Jean Benet Ramsey case and other famous cases. You know, I'm sure most of us could say the same thing for OJ with the glove and all of that. Here we see one actress who I think had a pretty good likeness to Patsy and I really liked her. She is reading from the Death of Innocence book and The exercise, I believe, for the actresses is for them to do it as Patsy. And this woman states that she had read the book when it first came out, but she, the narcissism in it was kind of lost on her. So it was interesting to watch her discover that after all these years. This woman was very vivid when she described the lack of display of emotion from the Ramses in the days after the murder. This woman had a really interesting take. She said that she had read an article stating that Patsy's motive was probably having to do with her quickly approaching 40th birthday, which I remember seeing that theory, and I also thought that seemed to be a stretch. But this woman was very offended by that suggestion. She said she was about to turn 39, and she didn't know what shade of ballistic she would go on someone if... They suggested that her just aging was the cause for something like that. And she makes a good point saying that it really is a sexist take and pigeonholes women in a, in a particular way. This woman, again, who her parents knew the Ramses, just reiterates how ridiculous it is that a theory like that would be circulating that out of Patsy's jealousy or fear of aging that she had some kind of motive to do this. So this is a really fascinating series of scenes where we see the actors auditioning for Patsy and John come together to reenact a press release and It's funny because all the men seem to have this impulse to want to put their arm around their wives to comfort Patsy. And a lot of the women playing Patsy have this bristling kind of impulse. And what I was describing earlier about the drama therapy exercises, something really interesting that would happen is, you know, you give the actors that are playing you in the various parts, the circumstances. And I can't tell you how many times, just based on very basic circumstances that you gave them about the story that they were acting out, how many times these real feelings would surface in the actors that were so similar to the feelings that that person had when they were in that situation and there was no need to say hey this is what I was feeling this is this is what I was thinking that was completely unnecessary by basically just giving them the circumstances and then giving them room to explore 
the physical actions started to inform the inner life of the person. So that really piqued my curiosity when I watched this section about these actors trying to negotiate these feelings, mixed feelings around to come together or to operate as single units and what John and Patsy ended up looking like in a lot of interviews was that they were individual units, you know, that they weren't necessarily hugging and holding on to each other as a unit, as a couple, as a family, but instead they were each standing on their own ground and giving their particular perspectives. Okay, this boy, God bless him, he bears a stunning resemblance to Burke as a child, and not only in his physical appearance, but also in his demeanor. He was very squirrely in his chair. He gave a very good delivery of, uh, I forget the exact line that Burke said. It was something about if you tell a secret, it's not a secret anymore. I'm paraphrasing that. But it was chilling. And if y'all have seen it, I want you to let me know what you thought about that too. And then again, this woman who kind of comes to the defense of the Ramses talks about how improbable it seems for a little boy to have the amount of force that it would have taken to inflict those fatal injuries on Jean Benet, or, you know, in particular, the the blow to her head. And then quickly, the next thing we see is a succession of these little boys auditioning for Burke, using a flashlight to hit a watermelon. And it's so macabre. And this boy goes one, two, three. And I believe on the third blow, the watermelon explodes and it pops in half and he casually takes a bite of the watermelon which was so creepy in this next scene with Burke and the psychologist it's so interesting because there are very few scenes presented like this most of it is breaking fourth wall the actors interviewing and whatnot or clearly auditioning like they were in the phone call but the scenes that they have in this movie are few and far in between and this is one of them and the actor who plays Burke is just terrific This woman brings up the significance of numerology in the case. I don't think I had considered that before, that Jean Benet was six and it was in 1996, um, potentially on December 26th. And she said that that could be the sign of a, a signature of someone who, you know, knew what they were doing and That was the signature that they left on this crime. Then they show us um, all these Santas and this guy in particular I really liked. He was just funny and had such a laid back attitude. And his opinion is it's very unlikely that a Santa or I guess intruder would be coming into the house. And again, we see this man who whose girlfriend at the time was working in John's company. And he said that he was at the memorial, I believe, where Fleet White spoke and he showed the vial of glitter. And this man said in that moment, hearing Fleet White say what he said and showing the glitter that he was convinced that Fleet White had done it. And this next Santa was really likable to he said that the company that he works with they do background checks for the protection of the children as well as the protection of the santas and he gave us an interesting factoid which is the reason that the santas wear white gloves is to make it easier to detect in pictures where their hands are which is such a sad fact And then this woman 
provided an interesting theory that I had never thought of before. She posed it as what if Patsy caught John essaying Jean Benet and she went to strike John with the golf club and got Jean Benet instead. Yeah. And contemplating that is very, very sad. Okay, this was my least favorite part of the film, but I think it's very important because it kind of reminds us, um, again, certain aspects of this case that even I will forget about sometimes. So this man is auditioning for John Mark Carr, the infamous man who tried to take credit for the crime, even though the evidence didn't show that he had anything to do with it. He was saying from John Mark Carr's perspective how Jean Benet was just pure beauty. And then again, in a rare scene, they show him being processed and and you can see the camera angle in this scene is we're positioned to look and observe through a doorway so that voyeuristic element of it is top of mind so the end of the movie is really my favorite part it goes into a lot of actors sharing traumas of theirs that are somewhat related to the case and Again, this is where it really reminds me of that drama therapy exercise. By enacting out other people's traumas or, you know, uh, traumatic events, it triggers something in us. It becomes a mirror into our own experiences. So this woman, poor thing, her, she said that she lost three children before. And not only that, but she describes a very unsettling childhood where her father was this charismatic man that, you know, he was handsome and everyone thought so highly of him. And he was very violent with her and her mother. And she's bringing this up to say that things are not always as they appear to the outside world. Everyone really admired her father and what was happening at home was an absolute nightmare. This woman is very vulnerable and opens up about her experience with potty training her son. And she said it flipped a switch in her and she It inspired anger in her that she didn't even know that she had. And I'm sure parents out there can relate to this in some way that, you know, there's certain triggers that we don't even know that we have that are or buttons that our children push and how scary it is. Those um, moments of parental rage and again, you know, bringing this up as connected to maybe perhaps Patsy's rage. This man was really sweet. He also was very vulnerable and shared that he had been recently diagnosed with prostate cancer and that he really believes in the mind-body connection and he relates that condition to a desire of his to have children and he was never able to fulfill that desire. And he talks about Patsy, and I had thought about this before too, about her her uterine cancer and what connection it might have had to her failings as a mother or her rejection of her maternal side. Of course, I'm just riffing on what he brought up. He didn't say all of this. And in the end, the film closes with this beautiful segment of 
well, first, it's kind of uncomfortable to watch because it's these little girls getting all done up. And as they're sprayed and pulled and primped and prodded, like they're so uncomfortable because they're little girls. They want to run around and play and not have hairspray in their, <laughs> not be inhaling hairspray, you know? And there's this one moment playful moment where the makeup artist is tickling the girl on her cheek and then after that there's this big release where she just screams and lets out all that energy that she's had to sit on while she's sitting there getting all these things done to her and it really painted a clear picture of what this process must be like for little girls going through the beauty pageant process and how even though there's some of it that they might enjoy there's these really unnatural procedures that they have to go through that must be uncomfortable and awful and again it just makes you question like is it really for them if if this isn't what they want to be doing, sitting in a chair and getting makeup plastered on them and, and extensions pinned into their hair. Is this more for the parents? And I think a lot of you would probably easily agree with that. So that's going to be it for me today. Please let me know what y'all think. Have you seen Casting Jean Benet before? If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.